Greetings everyone. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to exploit a stack-based buffer overflow vulnerability combined with shell code to execute a root shell on Kali Linux. The source code I'm going to use for this, along with the shell code, is available in a link in the video description. In addition, to follow along with this demo, you're going to have to have disabled ASLR, as I showed in demo 2. So to get started, let's take a look at our source code. This is the basic program that I'm going to be using. As you can see, we have a very simple main function. All it does is call overflow with an input passed in from argv, and all overflow has is a 64 character buffer, which we're going to overflow from the argument passed in with main. We also have two bits of shell code here that I'm going to be using later. As you can see in my note, we have to compile this with a special GCC flag called dash z exec stack, which will disable dep or the NX bit to ensure that we can actually execute our code on the stack. More advanced exploits will bypass this themselves, but for this simple exploit, we'll need to do it manually through GCC. So that'll be our first step. So GCC dash Z exec stack, and then the source code is here, and I'm gonna call this example 2.3. There we go. Now let's fire this up in GDB. Now the operative function here is overflow. So I'm gonna dis as overflow. And you can see that our string copy that causes the overflow is at overflow plus 29. So I'm going to set a breakpoint at plus 34 directly after the overflow happens. So break overflow plus 34. Okay. Now, the first thing we need to do is figure out where our instruction pointer is so that we can take it over and figure out how long our exploit string needs to be. So to do that, I'm going to run this with our handy Python here, calling print, I'm going to put in 63 A's. Why 63 again? Because right now I don't want to cause an overflow just yet. I'm just trying to figure out where EIP is. Okay, so I'll run it with this. Now let's take a look at our stack frame here to see where EIP is. We can see that EIP is at BFFF F30C. So I want to take a look at the stack. I want to know where my array ends, and I want to know the offset from there to EIP. So I'm going to look at 16 D words here, and I'm going to start at 0x, BFFF, F3, 0, 0, and minus 40 there to give me a good view of the stack. Okay, so my EIP is here. This is BFFF, F3, 0, C. And as you can see here, my capital, here are my 41s, or capital A, and it ends right here with my null terminator. So I need to fill 64 bytes, because that's how long my array is. And then I also need to fill another 12 bytes to get to my EIP, and then my EIP itself. So 64 plus 12 plus 4 is a total of 80 bytes. That's going to be the total length of my exploit string. Now, I also need an address that's going to contain my NOP sled, which is going to contain, which is going to be most of my padding. Um, the, sort, the shell code that I'm going to be using here is, as you can see, 21 bytes. And this is a very basic shell code to pop a shell on Linux. 21 bytes, this is my string, which I'm just going to go ahead and copy now. And this is a disassembly that's going to show you exactly what this does. I'm not going to walk through it. So my shell code is 21 bytes, which means in order to get an address for my knob sled, which is going to precede my shell code, what I can do is I can figure out where my 21 bytes are going to be. So each of these is four bytes, so this is one, two, three, four, five. So anything here and before is going to be my knob sled, which is where I want my EIP to point to once this is done. So I'm just going to choose this address at semi-random. So this is BFFF2DC. So that's the address that I'm going to overwrite EIP with. Okay, so now that I have all the constituent parts, let's piece together our exploit string. So I'm going to run this using Python again. So the first thing I need is my NOP sled, which is going to be hex 90, or the no-op instruction. And I'm going to need 55 of these. Why 55? Because 80 bytes total, minus 21 shellcode bytes, minus 4 EIP bytes, so that's 55, which is what we have to fill. So 55 there, plus my shellcode, which I've already copied. So I'll paste it there, and then plus the address that's going to point into my NOP sled, which, as I've decided, is, remember, this has to be a little endian, so DC, F2, FF, BF, BF, there we go. So there is my string. So I'm going to go ahead and run this, 
Yeah, studio. What? God damn it. I always do this. And there we go. Okay. Now, let us take a look at our stack frame again. So here we see the EIP is a BFFF F2 FC. It moved, okay, no big deal. Let us go back and take a look at our stack to see how well we did. So this is EIP. F2, FC, and as you can see, it's been successfully overwritten with my chosen address, BFFF, F2, DC. And as you can see, this address points to my NOP sled, because that's right there. And then here is the beginning of my shell code. 31C9 is the start of my shell code, and it ends right here at CD80. Uh, CD80. So, everything looks right. I have successfully overridden the instruction pointer with an address that points to my NOP sled. My NOP sled and my shell code is successfully on the stack, and this program allows an executable stack. Therefore, when I press continue here, I should get a shell. But I don't. Instead, I get a seg fault. So let's figure out why that happens. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run this again. Yes. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a watch point on the address that segfaulted, which is 0x bffff 2 fc What this will do is alert me whenever the value at this address changes. Okay, so I have my watch point set. Now I'm going to continue. So now you can see that it had an old value and it's been overwritten and it gives me the instruction that did it. So I want to see what caused this to happen. So I'm going to do x 0x bfff f 2 e and I see 68 2F2F73. Two two now, Eagle Eye observers might think this is familiar, and they would be correct. If they look at the shell code, what they will see right here is 68 2F2F73. Two two so, what's happening here, as is becoming pretty evident, is that our shell code is overwriting itself. And we can get proof of this by looking at the previous instruction that was executed with this command. And what we see here is push 68732F2F to the stack. So what we're exactly doing is our shellcode is overwriting itself because of its push to the stack. And thus it's causing a seg fault. Now there are two ways to solve this problem. I'm going to demo one of them. One way is to modify our NOPSLED plus shellcode to be NOPSLED plus shellcode plus NOPSLED, such that when the push to the stack happens, it is the shellcode that follows, sorry, it is the NOPSLED that follows the shellcode that gets overridden rather than the shellcode itself. The other way is to use shellcode that does not push to the stack at all, and that is the method that I'm going to demonstrate. So if I go back to my source code here, you will see that I have a different bit of shell code, which is longer. This one is 41 bytes, but this does not push to the stack. Now, you can look at the disassembly here, and you will see that there are a bunch of invalid uh, assembly instructions here, and I will leave this as an exercise for the viewer to figure out, but I have given you a hint as to what this might be. But for now, I'm just going to show using this. So do this, I'm going to run my Python again. Now because this is 41 bytes versus 50 versus 21 bytes, I need to shorten my not slit. So I'm going to do 35 instead of 55 plus my longer shell code here and the same address should work. If it doesn't, I'll go back through and find a new one. Actually, I'm going to have to decrease this by a bit because I need it to point further back. So if I run with this, hit my watch point, whatever, I don't care. Ah, there, go away. Aha! Now I have my shell successfully popped. Thanks for watching.